Contigo no quería Y las ganas de ver nos ganaría Pero no fue así Vamos lenta ya, Que si nos apuramos No disfrutamos del de momento Quiere que seamos felices, ella La que se apresura la puertica, ella Ella, ella, ella es sin timidez Como la ven, no le importa dónde y cuándo Pero nada no he hecho, no soy el que la mando Nunca lo seré, su carácter no es de niña Que la puede controlar cualquiera Y me encanta, yo lo sé Independiente Sabes que no es, te doy el desquite, que me quites Todas esas ganas que te tengo mujer, todo el mundo sabe que tú y yo somos más que panas Pero nos vamos lento, que el que se apura no llega a nada, no llega a nada, no, nada Estoy contigo yeah. Y porque la pasamos genial Es un castigo yeah. Es solo que conmigo Encontraste tu abrigo yeah. Y por ahí encontraste algo más Tú lo sabes No nos desviemos del caso Solo tú y yo mujer Tú 
eres perfecta, tú eres mi caro Y yo puedo ser tu negra Sé que tú quieres más de eso Beso. La que tírame ese hueso. hueso Que él no te dio lo que te di Y no solo hablo del sexo Lo que yo te di Baby, te Baby. quiero para mí Tomando y viendo en el free no se trata de sentir Se trata solo in a row. 
King you will not be I, 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 I.
to the CIA, the confident, intelligent, and assertive men out there. One love to the FBI, feminine, beautiful, and inspirational women. Oh, did you like the song? That was a song that was contributed by uh, one of the viewers of the channel, the I Am The King and Will Not Be Denied. He, he remixed the Ike joint. So, let's, so um, I will say this, man. If you guys want to get... Um, your music on or something like, just send it to me, man. Send it to me, send it to me, send it to me. Because I will tell you, I will listen to it. Let me go ahead and get the the name of the person that did that. But Okay, guys, tonight, I know there are a lot of things going on. There's a debate going on, but I, 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 I'm going to pull up your name, brother. If you see yourself in the, uh, go ahead and shout yourself out in the chat room. That was, he, re, he, re, he remixed uh, Ike's thing. So here's the thing, because, you know, I thought I had it written down. I didn't. Um, you guys see intro song classic, looking forward to the good show. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Is it Theo? Appreciate it, Theo. Theo comes through. Good <laughs> There's been a lot of back and forth between this high value man and what makes a high value man and you know uh, look there's a lot of a lot being said in online about relationships and dating because honestly uh for the first time in in the history of hell since in the history of history people are finding it hard to actually get together i mean they're not they're not having a problem hooking up and having sex but they're actually having a problem staying together you know i've been divorced twice and this is not uncommon people today are having more and more time finding one another and staying together uh so tonight we're going to talk about it because growing up in the as a child of the 70s and growing up in the 80s you know i sat around and listened to my mother and her friends trash men trash men just bash the crap out of guys these men ain't this these men ain't that but then i used to watch the kind of men that all these women chose and i'm like uh even my mom i'm like why don't you pick the nice guy she finally did at age 50. shout out to mom but it's no secret she was a horrible picker and that was back in the days when, you know, the neighborhoods are still segregated, more or less. But today, things are wide open. Things are wide open, and you would think with women having more access to education, employment, you, you don't, discrimination against women today will cost you a lot of money. So we can knock it off talking about, you know, Women not having certain rights or whatever. Knock it off. So if you're more educated, earning more, with less restrictions, why is marriage declining, especially in the black community? 
And tonight we're going to focus on women in general. But I want to talk to black women in particular. I want to talk to a certain group of black women. Because I really want to know. You see the title of the show. Do, really, do women really have the options that they think they have? Because I will tell you, I, over the last several months, I've heard many a many of a strong, intelligent, I don't need no... I'm a PhD. I'm a PhD, this and that, da 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 da, da. Well, if I can't find the kind of man I'm looking for, I will just date out. Really? Really? And my question is simply this. As somebody who sits down and talks to women often, and you ladies, I show, I've shown it show after show after show, you ladies in general are very uh, wrong. You have, you, you're terrible at evaluating yourselves. You know what you want, but you're terrible at evaluating yourselves. And I need to, I need to ask a question. Do you, is it, do you have options that you think you have? Is it options or delusions? If you can't get a high value, Henry, competitive, above average brother, how do you think you're going to get that or better Brad, Lee, Ahmed, and Enrique? How's that supposed to happen? How's that supposed to happen? I don't know. But we need to figure it out. That's music's loud. I'm gonna have to call down to the whole uh, town to the front desk and tell them they're gonna need to shut these people down. But here's the thing: in all seriousness, the higher up you go in education, age, weight, the 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 more up you go, ladies, in anything, age, weight, education, income the more it restricts your options. Unless you go up in beauty. So let's talk about it. Do, do you ladies really have the options you think you have? Because especially here on YouTube, I hear a lot of this talking about, well, you know, these dudes over here are uncompetitive and they're conquered, they're this and that. Yeah, yeah, that ain't, that ain't I don't, I'm not, no, 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 no. That's that's these guys over here. I'm talking to the top men who want to be in the top 10% of men and the top 20 to 30 percent of the men feeding into the top 10 percent. See, when you're taking the top 30, top 20 or 30 percent of men that are feeding into the top 10 percent, we don't have to worry about the set bottom 70 percent, the dusty, crusty beta. Men. Yeah, that's over here. We ain't worried about all that. So what about over here? The men who are competitive. The men who are competitive out there making a mark and doing something. Why can't you get one of these men? And why do you think if you can't get a man in your own backyard, why do you think you're going to go to another neighborhood and find somebody? That's just not how human beings operate. Now, I'm sure there are going to be people in here anecdotally thinking, well, I know this one girl and that statistically it's insignificant. How are you competing for the men you say you want? How are you competing for the men you say you want and the men that are on your level? Hold on just a second, folks. This is starting to get on my nerves. So, guys, get the likes up. While we're trying to get the likes up, guys, I'm going to tell you, I need to get them likes up because they are, oh, yeah, we don't even have the likes over. No, no, no. We're going to get these likes up. Get them up. Get my likes up. Just a second. Keep them up, guys. I don't want to have to cut the show because here's the thing. I'm not trying to 
bash women. If anything, what I try to do is try to try to try to inject some some reality in this. Because I'm not gonna lie, I have heard women who are over 30, overweight, with somebody else's hair on their head, attitude, talking about, well, I can't find a, a good black man out here. I'm just going to date out. I'll go get me a white man. Hell, it happened on my show two or three weeks ago. Well, that one, it, It's a clip right now on my show where that one was like, you know, she didn't 45 years old, right? And now all of a sudden she's doing with Arab men. This is not about IR this or IR that. That shows later this week. My question is this. If you're not a competitive woman with your own man, how do you have the options to date anywhere else? Because this is about being competitive. Because tomorrow night's show, we're going to talk about it. Should competitive or successful or high-value men date out? Because that's where we're at now. We're at this now. It's about time. If you've already done the work to make yourself a competitive man or a woman, should you really have to just sit here and deal with what's going on? Let's talk about it. Uh, let's talk about women in general, black women in particular. Let's talk about black women where I have the stats. 40 million black people, 20 million men, 20 million women, all right? Of the 20 million women, 80% are overweight or obese. That's automatically 16 million that are over here. Com successful, competitive men don't want overweight women. That means you've already dropped the number from 20 million to 4 million. That's 4 million total. That's not age adjusted. That's not adjusted for uh, marital status. It's nothing. It's a raw number. You automatically tell black men there's only one, two in 10 of you that are competitive from a fitness standpoint. Well, lower your, no, no. Well, if you're not competitive with black men because you're overweight, I will tell you right now, Brad shows looking at you like you crazy. Y'all argue with me about a dress size being 145 pounds. You argue with me about that. Good luck. Even in New York City, pandemic central, white women are out. White women, Asian women, Hispanic women, Middle Eastern women are out right now running these streets. Running with masks on. Running with masks on. I, I go over to Bergdorf Goodman and all I see is this. Me, me. White women. <laughs> I got to stay in this Park Avenue address. It is fun. And I'm looking to say, where are the black women out here running? Uh-uh. Black women over there at Nathan's, over there getting some street meat. You know, that's called hot dogs. They're they over there with, with sparkly but dangle masks on and carrying on. I'm like, well, wait a minute. These women is running and drinking celery juice, and you over here talking about it. <laughs> But you know what? When I look at the women who are running, they got wedding rings. When I look at the women who ain't running, when I look at the women that are going, bo -bo -do -bo -do -bo -bo -do -bo do bo do bo do do they single AF. Single AF. So, just a second. Single AF. So, if you can't get with your men, you can't get with the other group. Just a second. coming up so here's the thing this should not be an issue ladies you know I'm talking to if you're talking about dating out you must be by definition already competitive and competitive means one you're fit two you're not a baby mama how are you going to talk about having options to date out if you're not fit got a kid and cannot meet a beauty standard Oh, dang. Did I say that? Yep, I did. Mm -hmm. Because that's the reality. You don't get to just say you're going to go date out just because 
It sounds good. It sounds good. That don't make it true. That don't make it right. That don't mean you get to just decide you're going to go there. And here's the thing. If you can't date out, stop talking about it. Stop talking about it. Hold on. Mm -mm, what the heck was that? What in the heck? Hold on. Sorry about that. If you really can't date out, why are you talking like you got options? I mean, I'm sitting here watching women that just, wow. Wow. I'm watching women just walk around like, I'm serious, 250, 300 pound women talking like they can go date Brad. And yeah, you can go get, you know, a bottom shelf dude, but you're not going to get a competitive dude. And the funny thing is, knock yourself out. If you want, if you, if you, the, the, the knowledge of saying, well, if I can't, if brothers can't meet up a certain standard, you're going to go get a bottom shelf dude? No, nah, man. No, 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 no. No, not going to work. Makes no sense. Well, you're not supposed to talk about this. You're not supposed to judge anybody. You're not supposed to judge women. Sorry. You know, shout out to Obsidian. He was talking about, he dropped a video today talking about female dating strategies, a website where a lot of things you hear in there are some of the same things you have heard in uh, spaces on YouTube for the, for the longest. And that's what we're getting to. We're getting to the point to where I don't judge why you want what you want. Can you get it? Do you have the options if you are? Do you have the options? If you are, do you really have those options? All right. Then if you do, prove it. Why do we hear all these women talking about dating out, dating out, dating out? And I have yet to see one of you in public. Instagram, Facebook, no pictures. No one can verify a non-black man on your arm. A, a, a non-whatever. Whatever your thing is, no one can verify this. Uh-oh. Receipts. If you listen to women talk about dating out and having options, if you're a woman listening to this, you should say, okay, show me, show me a picture of you and your dude hugged up. If they can't show you a picture of them, that that man hugged up, then knock it off. Knock it off because many of you ladies are just as delusional AF. De you're just delusional AF. Uh, sad trombone. And when a man is delusional, the world slaps him down. When a man is delusional, the world slaps him back to reality. Well, it's time for you ladies to start getting a reality check. If you are all that, then why are brothers not chasing you? If you are all that, why are the men of your group not knocking down your door to put a ring on it, to wife you up? Because I will tell you, the kind and caliber of women I deal with, they don't want for men, they don't want for attention. See, when you are competitive, you are used to dealing with competitive people on the other side of you. As a, as a competitive man, I only deal with com women who are competitive. And, and it's a matter of I'm going to beat that competition and she's going to beat my competition. Therefore, we'll feel like we got a good deal together. What? Who are you beating? Where are these options coming from? Now, one thing I will say is we've noticed an increase, you know, of the black men who marry and who have who have the black men who marry and have college degrees one in three are marrying non-black women why is that i don't know 
But I would think you would want to ask those men, why? Why, 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 why? I would tell you what I hear from many young men. We're going to kind of get into this tomorrow night. But what I'm hearing from young men, young college men, young men around the country, they're like, look, man, I did our own women, but they're too, they're too hard to deal with. They're mean. And I got news for you. They're not going to put up with a lot of this stuff. This Iana Van Zandt, fix my life, uh, stand in it with them. No, 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 no. That's BS. I would not tell anybody that is competitive that you need to stand in dysfunction with somebody as in, in solidarity. No. Hey, sis, dig you. Go get your head together, and if I'm still free when your head is straight, I would love to date you and keep it moving. See, Anna Van Zandt has got y'all thinking, got, got you twisted up. That was actually in my feet a little bit earlier today. She was trying to change opin opinions of men who thought, you know, trying to change that angry black woman stereotype. But she was trying to change the men. And in the comments section, everybody was saying, damn, she missed the opportunity here. She just basically justify why they think see the time for telling the market that it's wrong is over so my thing is ladies i'm all for it if you cannot find a competitive brother on your side if you cannot find a competitive man on your side cool but can you truly truly marry out not date out marry out marry out can you truly marry out right no 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 and when you marrying out are you marrying out and up because i would say as from a black man many of you sisters want black men to walk on water and i'm good with that cool guys i've said it get over here become competitive do what you have to do to become the best version of yourself and then pick from the from the women that are available. But my question is this, are you competitive? And I would say female matchmakers across the board will tell you they're having more and more issues with women having being upset that they have to meet a beauty standard. That they have to meet a weight standard. And the thing is, do you think a man that you don't know is going to sit there and wait for you to lose a hundred pounds? No, sorry. He has to go on about his life. I said this the other day to a woman I was talking to. Look, if you don't find your guy and he don't find y'all, get on down, get on into life. Because honestly, time is the most valuable commodity and we don't need to stop wasting time. Stop wasting time. So ladies, do you have the option to marry out? Let's talk about it. I would love to hear from some of the women who really think that the majority of women have the option to marry out. Because by definition, you must be talking about some extremely competitive women. And I just don't see it. I don't see competitive women in mass. When I can look at eight out of 10 and say, physically, from a fitness standpoint, you're not competitive. But I'm open to being proven wrong. So let's see what's going on. All right, let's get the likes up. 2,100 people in here. Uh, you knew this show was going to be light on the on the, on the the views because it's going to hurt some folks' feelings. And that's fine. Because if you're not willing to have the conversation, that's okay. What are you going to do about it, though? What are you going to do about it? Because it's one thing to say, I'm going to do something. It's another thing to be able to do it. Just like the other day when, you know, I asked a woman, she said she doesn't want to work. I was like, well, I, preferably I'd be ready to work from home. Just last night. And I said, well, what do you do? She was a machine operator of some sort. I'm like, well, then how do you plan on running a business with a husband and three children? And you're not running a business now. You're an unskilled laborer. And what it basically came down to is this is a fantasy. The question is, 
Many women don't value, don't understand the time value of money, understand how money works, or, under, or understand how to value a man. That came from women yesterday. This is all rolled into the same discussion. The question is really comes down to this. Do you have options or delusions? Are you a woman that has the option to date out or the delusion to think you can date out? That's the big difference. The option or the delusion. Options or delusions. Now, if you have the option, then by all means, get the best deal you can get. But if you have a delusion, uh, understand where it's, where it's rooted. It's rooted in you. Because it ain't rooted in the men. You cannot sit back and say, well, the reason I want to date out is because ain't no, 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 no. I prove night, night after night after night, night after night after night, if you are a competitive woman, you have options. Who is going on? What is going on with this person in my chat room? Uh, who is this ball one person that y'all keep talking about? What are y'all doing, man? Back to, oh. Hey, Stacey, you go ahead and call in. Because you just saw three women. Okay, you go ahead and call in because... Um, Miss Baldwin, are you trying to make the case that, uh, in general, sisters are fit? See, this man is disrespectful. Your mama. How about that? How about that? Your mama. <laughs> How about that? See, I'm going to talk to women like you, the woman I just blocked. The facts truth is not respectful or disrespectful it just is 80 percent of our sisters are overweight and 80 percent of those are obese look up any statistic you want compiled by any group of black academicians and they will tell you this is a massive issue spelman university all female all black woman schools scrapped all their college athletics to put money into student body health because they noticed women coming to college were morbidly um, overweight and morbidly obese at 18 years old. So I think you're disrespectful for running around acting like this does not exist. Women like that are your enemy, sister. Women like that are your enemy. Women like that who want to shield your ears from the truth are your enemy, not me. You, and you're more than welcome to call in too, but you understand something. I'm going to ask about you. See, a big part of the, this conversation is we don't, like, we don't like putting numbers to things. And later on this week, we're going to talk about female women because when we, it wouldn't be nothing. When we call men losers, you women are big on calling dudes things as you should. But there are a lot of women out here who are unaccounted for, who are female losers. What would make you a loser as a man? 25 years old, living at home, underemployed. Loser. If you're 25 years old or older, living at home, underemployed, that would make you a loser. Unless you're in med school or... or, or studying or, or becoming a brain surgeon, then you want to complicate that if you're over 25 years old, underemployed, living at home, and not paying rent, you're a loser. They love to scroll around the truth, but they're not going to get around it because here's the thing, Jared. Women, like the woman that came in and said you're disrespectful, have been have, are used to getting around talking about these big terms by trying to paint all men as well. I'm talking about the kind of men that you say you want, the men who are high value, the men who are successful, the men who are competitive, the men who are out there doing it, can you get one? All you need is one. Stop worrying about white and supremacy and this and this. this. No, 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 no. It's, it's about you. Can you get one? Can you get one? 
And if you say, "Uh, well, ain't nothing to get," I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna date out. Oh, okay. Well, if you can't get one that's supposedly so bad at the bottom, how you gonna get one that's above them? That's delusion. Stacy wants to link the call in. Stacy can sit her ass right there until I'm done. You ain't nobody to me, Stacy. Because if you had a man, you would already be at home with him instead of over here with us talking. So sit your hot cakes right down and wait till I'm done. You trying to talk to me. You in my sex. Matter of fact, let me help you out. I didn't say you said that, but let me go ahead and do this for you. We're going to go ahead and give you a little time out. You, you, you're doing a little, just go ahead and sit on down. I'm going to put you in the corner. You can still watch, but shh, shh, I need you to pipe down. So, here gonna, here's, here's the typical playbook. When we start talking about these things, shame, insults, guilt, and the need to be right are things that typically get thrown at men just for asking, do you really have the options you think you have? Do you really have the options? Because this is another thing. This is the same thing to women who decide, I'm going to take my 20s for myself. I'm going to graduate, go to high school, go to college, and then I, in my 20s, I'm going to do what I want. And then and when I turn 30, I'm just going to magically go find a man off the high-value tree. Do you have those options? Do you have those options? Very few, very few women have those options. And the women that do, know they do. The women that do, know they do. <laughs> oh. Now, watch them get triggered, guys, because I'm just simply asking a question that I'm not supposed to ask. Huh. All right. Go ahead and put it in the chat room. We're about to open. We're about to open uh, the, the uh, call lines. So Stacy and Boom Sheikah and whoever else can call in and see, y'all gonna really be upset when we start doing the conversation tomorrow. When we open the when we start opening the, the call line and I say, hey, should competitive people uh date out? C competitive anybody. Should you start dating out? Should you marry out? Should competitive people date and marry out? That's a question. I'm not gonna put my opinion on it. I'm just gonna ask the question. Should they? Because you don't want to waste your time. But like I say, all the women who sit around thinking that they can do whatever they want. Whatever, I'll do what I want. Yep. Yeah. That's what it sounds like a lot of times. Like, I, I, whatever, I'll do what I want. I do what I want. I do what I want. You can't tell me. Only God can judge me. Uh huh, right. Uh huh. Right. Your $50,000 a year salary, working paycheck to paycheck, living middle class. No husband, no kids, 60 years old, medical issues happen. What's going to happen? Who's going to come take care of you? Why are you thinking about getting these options to date out? You know, dating out is fine, but marrying out. Can't get this one. You're going to get that one. But, but if you don't get either, what's going to happen? You're going to die alone. Dying alone, and you know what? Some of y'all seem to be cool with that. Some of y'all seem to be really cool with that, but we're going to get right on into it because uh, I'm fine with it if you're fine with it. All right, it's time to open the call lines. Wait, first off, let me see what these likes are looking like. These likes need to get... Oh, no, we don't even have the likes up over... We got 2,700 people in here watching. We don't. Do we even have over 1,000 likes? Yeah... Yeah, we don't even, we, we should have closer to 1,800 likes. Yeah, well, um, we're not going to open the call line until y'all get my likes up. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. 
we have a thousand likes and then we should have close to 1700 so well y'all gonna make me do what i'm what i told you i didn't want to do so here we go get my money get them up Pay me! Get him up! The dog is Cargill! That brother, that's brother right there is running to stay competitive. Come on. Get on. on. Look, ladies, understand something. All right. I'll be, I'll admit. There's a little tongue in cheek. There's a little humor. There's a little sarcasm in this, but this is really true. I'm really asking. I am sitting. And why am I asking this, uh, Dr. Dre? Dre, I am amazed at how many women truly, truly believe they got options to date out. I'm amazed at how many women truly, seriously believe. Oh, all I got to do. is put something up on Tinder or whatever, and all of a sudden, these guys are going to just be after me. I mean, I'm serious. They truly believe that they got it like this. But I, then when I ask, well, have you ever had one of these men propose to you? Oh, no. And see, the thing is, are your standards just as high for the non-whatever your group is as it is for the guys of your group? That's all I'm asking. Because if you're going to date out and you think you have options, you need to be getting, at least making a lateral move. But it should be moving up. Because I tell you right now, your godfather, if you was to see me without, out with Becky, Becky would be so bad that even the most pro-black militant, they would be like, I that's a bad motherfucker. That's what you're going to see. If you see me out with a, with a white woman, that's going to be a bad motherfucker. He'll be like, God damn. I wanted to hate on him, but shit. Did you see her? I know. They ain't going to say nothing. You see me out with a Latina? Oh, yes. An Asian woman? Oh, yeah. Yes. If you see me out with a non-black woman, I guarantee she's going to be bona fide bad. Shut you up. Like that. Girl, I saw him out with, yep, shut up. Did you see her? Damn, yeah, she was a bad motherfucker. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. Because my preference is one thing. But I be doggone if I sit around and waste my life or tell guys to waste their life waiting for women who think that they don't exist. And the same thing for you, sis. If you are truly a competitive woman and you cannot find a man, let you, then you should. But this means you're competitive. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Y'all spread the word. The conversation is open. The call lines are open. It is time to do the damn thing. Get up the money world, girl. Luna. Money world. El mundo quiere dinero. Money world. Se arregla con dinero. Money world. Si me 
quiero educar eh, Dormir en algún lugar Un lugar para trabajar eh, Y si no hay para emigrar Todo money, money, todo el dinero Solo un par de gente se lleva el botín entero Funny, funny, pasa verdadero Si tienen la verde siempre llegará primero Pero llegaremos antes o después Solo a lo suyo que Dios te lo ve Que por más que tarde lo veré caer Somos malos buenos y tenemos que lo veré, no vendo mi alma, lo lograré. Seré el más grande, no olvidaré de dónde vengo ni cómo fue. Money World, yeah. el mundo quiere dinero. Money World, se arregla con dinero. Money World, yo digo la como son, no quiero ninguna, ninguna aceptación Tampoco vengo a pedir perdón Porque mis sentimientos se volvieron la canción yeah. No me vale mucho como tú me ves Sabes tú me llegas solo a los pies Para mí ser grande es un interés Ser un buen humano para mí es un deber El dinero ya lo veré No vendo mi alma, lo lograré Seré el más grande, no olvidaré De dónde vengo ni cómo voy Money World El mundo quiere dinero Money World Se arregla con dinero Money World De corazón De corazón La plata no te hace ser feliz De corazón De corazón Money World El mundo quiere dinero Yeah, 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 yeah Money World Money World Money World Money World Se arregla con dinero Money World Lunes Lunático I'm good, how are you? There we go, now we're back. All right, thank you. Uh, shout out to Sky Boo. <laughs> All right, Natalia, let's get into it. Um, I like to ask people uh, the question, um, do you have the option to date out? Do, do you have the option to date Are we talking about you or are we talking about the subject, first off? Myself. All right, do you have the option to date out? I thought I did, but... Okay. I'm not sure. All right, let's talk about it. How old are you? 23. 23. Are you in college or out of college? Um, I'm in college currently. I'm supposed to graduate this semester. So. All right. So um, why did you say you thought you did? 
Well, that was like my goal. Cause usually when it comes to like my race, I'm not black enough for them or I'm too white. So like, they'll be like, oh, she's cute, but she's not black enough. So I was just gonna go for like an Enrique or something along the line, okay. something along, along those lines. There Where do you go to school? Um, University of Central Florida. Okay. So your reason for wanting to date out is because of not being accepted by black men? That and like, I just picture myself having like a multicultural family. So it's like both of the things. All right, are your parents black? Yes. Okay, so I gotta ask, why would you want a multicultural family if your parents are black? I'm just asking. Because, I, I mean, I, I can't know. I feel like I never really resonated with my culture. Not just, like, Black in general, but just, like, because I'm Haitian, so this Haitian specifically. Okay. That's, really... We're falling to Black in this country. <laughs> I mean, we, yeah. we, we can split hairs, but you would still fall in the Black bucket. Well, yeah, yeah. I would. Um, so have you ever dated or not? Have you ever, do you date? Who do you date? I I, I usually go for. Okay. When's the last time you had a boyfriend? Like senior year of high school. So you don't, so you don't date. <laughs> no. So where we at is basically you fall into the category of almost like a female incel. So all this is theoretical for you. Pretty much, yeah. All right. So why would you go for the hardest part of the theory? This is what I basically got from you. I don't have any real luck dating. I haven't dated since I'm senior in high school. I'm 23, so that's five years. That's 20% of your life. So in that five years, you said, well, instead of trying to figure out or put myself out there, I'm going to come up with my own reasoning and justification. And then I think it'll make more sense for me to try to date non-black men and have a multicultural family. That's harder. <laughs> okay. I mean, do you not understand that if you have an issue date getting fitting in a black culture where you're from, you don't know nothing about them people. I mean, right? Yeah, you're not wrong. Uh, so you're socially awkward. This is what I'm getting at. You're socially awkward and you need to work on that. This ain't about black people. This is about you and being socially awkward. And we can work with that. Okay. Well, I, I, I'm aware of that. Um, okay. I so if you're socially that. awkward, that means you're going to be socially awkward with men, period. Or did you think black men were different? Different in what sense? You tell me. You're the one who's so, who doesn't have a boyfriend, hasn't really dated. So if you're socially awkward with men, did you think you would have... You, it, see, it would be different if you say, well, I don't fit in with black guys. They think that I'm not black enough or this or that. But white guys, Hispanic guys, and Asian guys love me, and I got dates left and right, and I'm always for the. But that's not you. You got no black men, and you got no other men. That means you're socially awkward for all men. That means this ain't a men problem. This means it's a you problem. So I can't let you scapegoat black men for being saying you're not something or enough. You're just not. You're just a female incel, which we can work with. That's really not this broadcast. You're going to be better on the broadcast. I'm going to have Friday night. We talk about women who fit into this category. Where do you live? Orlando, Florida. With whom? Uh, roommates. Roommates. Uh, not your parents? No. Okay. So um, 
here's the thing what's going on with a lot with your generation you really don't date you got to go out and hang out in groups but this social awkward thing is going to have to be worked out because once you cross over 25 and are out of college and things this can this can spiral out of control really badly so you want to make sure you tune into the broadcast i'm going to have uh at the end of the week okay okay thank you yeah guys she's not She's not really in the, in the, in the, she's, she's not in the, uh, she's not dating at all. So to say dating out, see, you can't say I have a problem with black men because they don't think I'm black enough. If you're not dating Bradley, Ahmed, or Enrique, you ain't dating none of them. Brianna, you need to come on back. Um, yeah. It weren't for the mix. If it weren't for the mix, you'd already moved on to other groups by now. Shout out to the mix. He said, if it weren't for the mix, he'd already moved on to. I mean, the mix is doing great work. I will be admitting more people into the group uh, tomorrow and Sunday. Brianna, you need to come back. I don't see where you are. You're just sitting up here. Is this a picture? Lord have mercy. All right, Brianna, unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Hello. I can. So, do you uh do you really have the option to date out? Okay. Uh I don't see. I see a picture of a couch. Why do I have a picture of a couch? <laughs> because this was actually my Zoom was set up for um I'm just a kidding. school that I was in at the time, so Okay, that's cool. Yeah, that's <laughs> all right. Cool. So, so just so yeah. I can get a little background on. So, it. how old are you? Okay, I'm forty. Forty. Uh, any children? Hello. 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 All right. Let's try this again. Brianna, Brianna. So, okay. Can't hear you. Uh, I can hear you just fine. Okay, great. Well, you're going in and out. So I told you that I was 40 and then I didn't hear anything. I was saying, do you have any children? Oh, okay. My son, he's 20. 20. Have you ever been married? Yeah. Yes. I'm divorced. Um, yes. How long were you married? About ten years. Okay. So, uh, is your fa is your son's father black? Yes. All right. So, what makes you think you? So, why? The question is: Do women really have the option uh, to date out? Many do we have the option to do, to do? Do women really have the options they think they have? What options do you think you do you say you have? Well, uh, yeah, but um, all right, I don't know what's going on with you and your sound, but I, um, hold on, your sound is going so in. I, I hold on, hold on, I'm gonna drop you back in the waiting room. We're gonna readmit you because I don't know what's going on with your sound, okay. Brianna, I'm, I don't know what's going on with your sound, but everybody else is fine. You're in the waiting room. I'm going to bring you back. Make sure you connect your audio. Get off of Bluetooth. Get off the of speakerphone if possible. Yeah, let's see if this works better. Unmute yourself, please. Hello. Hello. Hey. Ma'am, can you hear me? Yes. Are you on a what are you? Are you on a laptop? No, I'm on a cell phone. Do you have on headphones? No, AirPods, I don't. anything like that? I'm gonna try something. Turn off the Wi-Fi, ma'am, because if you have on AirPods or or. or um, all right. Uh, 
Um, Are you still there? Huh? Hey, I can hear you, sir. Oh, well, we can't hear you, so you're going in and out. So, if you're on a, are you on the speak? Okay, let's try this. You, your son is 20. You were married for 10 years. Yes. All right. So, what options do you say you have? I mean, I pretty much have the option to date out of my race. That's, I guess, that's what the discussion okay. is. Okay. Um, How tall are you? I'm five six. Are you moving around like in a car or something too? I'm not well. I'm I'm trying to do something at the moment to to get the sound to be oh. better. But I'm all right, so you're five six. Uh, what dress size? I say about uh between a twelve and a fourteen. How much did you weigh the last time you weighed yourself? About between one eighty five and one ninety. So you're telling me at almost 200 pounds, you have the option to marry out at 40 years old? Yeah, actually, Kevin, what I wanted to ask you before. Well, hold on. Before you decide to start going there, I just want to be clear. This is what you're saying. Yes. Oh, yeah, right. definitely. <laughs> okay. Okay. So now my question is, like, I totally understand the weight parameters that you have. Now, what I wanted to understand is if you had a woman that was not in those weight parameters, you know, she's heavier for her height, but she's, like I say, just extremely, um, you know, Instagram baddie, just, you know, that type of figure. Is there an exception for that or are we still sticking to these? Uh, well, hold on. I'll answer the question very simply. You can yeah. for you can for rappers and, and 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 video vixens and shit like that, but not for not for truly competitive and successful men out here moving around. No, they don't they don't wife that. Oh, okay. So hold on, okay. hold on. Yeah. So you go down, you go down to your you go to you turn off of Instagram back because we're you're forty. I'm fifty one. We're, we're Generation X. We're grown damn people. Right. I don't deal with baddies. I deal with reality and men who have who are successful don't marry 200 pound women because they can they can get a woman who's 140 pounds 120 pounds right so the, sure. men, so the men that you so do you have the option to marry high are you talking about dating white men hispanic men asian men middle eastern men what are you talking about all of them no 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 i need to know which one what's your preference then Well, my preference, I guess, what well, I would just say Caucasian. All right, uh, so white men, a white man. So white men. So are you dating a white man right now? No, actually, I'm dating a Persian man right now, but I've dated a white man uh, in uh, the huh. several times. Several times. I've dated. You've been prepared. Okay. Okay. Hold on, night. don't over talk me. Okay, I wasn't trying to, sir. Relax. Well, oh, well, back that shit up, too. Don't, don't, look here, lady. You watch my show enough. I'll be nice to you if you're nice to me, but don't play that with me. Your microphone is the one having the issue, not me. So you're dating a Persian man. Are you? Are you? Is he? Are you dating with him? Are you dating him to get married? Yeah. Why not? No, no. <laughs> why not? He stepped to you with the intentions of marrying you. We we haven't gotten to that point. So so. So, hold on, let me tell you. <laughs> See, thank you. You just said, why not? Like, all of a sudden, you can decide to get married if you want to. And the question is very simple. Do women have the options you, you're saying? I asked you, very, you're almost 200 pounds, and you prefer a white man. White men ain't going for no 200-pound black woman for a wife. You can knock that shit off. And now well, he actually with a Persian man, and he ain't even trying to make you his wife. No, I mean, you're creating a certain narrative. But not creating that's a certain not... narrative. I asked you, did you start dating him with marriage intentions? Did he step no, to you with marriage intentions? That. Okay. Did All he right. step to you with the intention to marry you? Kevin, we're dating. He didn't He didn't step to me and pop out a ring. I mean, it doesn't I ask you if he stepped to you and pop out a ring, but you're 40 years old, divorced with a 20-year-old son. You done already been to the rodeo. A man who wants to get married steps to a woman with the intentions of marriage. I'm not new to this. 
So you're out here dating women and popping the question on no, the second No, no, chick. Don't ask me what the fuck I'm doing. I'm asking you. You're the one that said you have the options. And I'm asking you what white man or Persian man has stepped to you and said, I want, want to date you towards the goal of being married. That's what I'm asking. Don't ask me about me because what I'm doing is working just fine. I'm asking you about what you said you have. And you have yet to say that you have I'm a white man. Or a that's what man. I have. We're dating. We've discussed uh, the fact that we, we want to move towards, of course, marriage, family. How long have you been dating him? Probably about four months. Four months. How long do you think? It's, how old is he? 35. So he's younger than you. Yes. Oh. Um, have you met his parents? His parents are in this country. What does he do for a living? He's an engineer. He's an engineer. Does he have any? Does he ever been married? No. Any children? No, I don't know. So he has. So um, would you have to meet his parents before you guys got married? Uh, would I have to meet his parents? Well, he stated that his parents were parents were very open minded to him dating out of his race. Um, you have to meet his parents before you guys. How would I? I don't. I. I, I mean, that's that's a that's a, a very vast question. No, I wouldn't not. know. That. No, it really isn't, ma'am. See what you're. What I'm. <laughs> okay. You're dating a man who's younger than you. Yes. Already, reds a red flag, and a man from a different culture, that there's very who prizes what their parents think very much so. Why does it? Why Hold does on, it? So, yes. Because I'm gonna tell you right now, ma'am. You got the you got the westernized. This as a daughter-in-law is gonna be a problem. Even if even if this man stepped to you from day one and said, "You're the kind of woman I love to marry," I would like to see this conversation happen. <laughs> and because those will be your in-laws. Those will be my in-laws. Yes, that'll be his mother and father-in-law. You will yeah, be your well, daughter-in-law. Yeah. But you need to meet them. Okay, so you mean to tell me you guys have talked about marriage? Who brought it up? Him or you? Mm, I can't remember. Really? You would know if he brought it up. I would know if he why. If you would know guys, if you brought it. Come on, come on, sis. I'm trying not to go there, but goddamn. No, I'm no. I, I like you, would you would know if the man brought you would know if a man brought why? you got you like why? all right now, you're not gonna overtalk me. You ladies get real game goofy when I start asking certain questions. Women know if a man brings up marriage. If you had to bring it up, that means it wasn't he, his idea. No majority of men that I have talked to in my life, we talk about things openly. So it's not a big <laughs> I'm not talking about the majority you, of men you, you talk about. Oh my All right, yeah. So here's what's gonna happen with this. You're pr prototypical of writing this is a prototypical. So if you're not gonna play the conversation the right way, I'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen, lady. Either you're going to not talk over me or I'm going to bid you a good night. Did you bring up the notion of marriage or did he bring it up? Okay, second time you asked the question, I don't remember who brought it up. It's we been four months. About it. We were just having a discussion. We had so many discussions about a lot of things because we're okay. from different cultures. So exactly. We talk about exactly. Lot exactly. You're from different cultures. You're from different cultures. And are you <laughs> very familiar with his culture? And how things work? I'm not. I'm not. That's why. All right, he, then. He, how about this? Did you make it a requ Do you want to get married? Yes. Did you make it a requirement for the men you date that you have to only date men that want to get married? Thank you. You did not make it a requirement. So having these conversations and not knowing who brought it up, great. That's why it's all nebulous. So thinking you can just get married to a man and you ain't made it a requirement, make it a requirement to 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 a man. Make it a requirement to Brad and see how far they go with you. Okay. Thank you for proving my point. Do you think you proved your point? Oh, I, I certainly proved my point. I certainly did. Certainly proved my point.
40 year old, 200 pound, strong, independent, don't need no man dating a 35 year old Persian man who you never made a requirement that I want to get married, but you know damn well better than to step to Brad or Med with that 200 pound attitude saying, well, you can't date me if you ain't trying to get married trying to backdoor marriage. You don't know nothing about that culture. You don't know nothing about that man. And he is just taking it for the ride. That's fine. But lady, if you think you got the option to be that man's wife, <laughs> send me an invitation. Out of your French toast mind. Are you serious? Are you serious? And like I said, all it takes is a little bit. As soon as she start getting triggered, got a little upset. Can you imagine what it would be like she go meet his mother and her father and they be like, who is this big loud woman here? Can you imagine what that would be like? Do you know his culture? No. <laughs> then you don't even know what the French toast you're talking about. Oh my God. You think you proved your point? Yes. That you 40 and 200 pounds and think you got options to, to marry out. Woo. Seriously. Well, I don't know who brought it up. Uh, ladies, if you're dating a man that you wanted to marry, see, marriage, it's like all these women who call in with all these fantasy engagements and be lying all the time. Y'all going to learn to stop lying to me because I'm like a bloodhound when I'm on your lie. I don't know who brought up the subject of marriage. At 40 years old, as the divorce say, you don't know who brought it up? Sound like you did. Because you damn sure didn't make a requirement what I asked you. Did you make it a requirement to date you that he wants to marry you or he wants to be marriage-minded? No. Why you dog out your guests? Oh, Lord have mercy. Poor baby. You think you're going to call this to argue with me? That's not going to really work too well for you. But <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. So, unfortunately... Many women think that they have the options that they don't have. And when somebody starts asking questions, uh-oh, then all of a sudden it becomes disrespectful or mean. You're 40, 20-year-old. You should know what you want and what the requirements are. If you're going to come in the chat room, you might as well connect your microphone see many women mistake the fact that just because someone will have sex with you that they want to be with you now you can lower your hand if you want to talk you're going to get on the microphone and, and, and act like anybody else. No, if you're gonna if you're gonna ask me a question, you're gonna ask me like a grown up. That's how this gonna work. That's why I said this whole notion of I'm dealing with, I'm dating. See, that's why I have dating and options. Do women really have the options they think they have? And many of you don't have the options to get married. You have the option to date, which means the options to be a short-term, possibly a long-term sexual companion. Short-term, six months or less. Long-term, six months to two years. Seven, to, seven months to two years. Short-term, six months or less. Long-term, seven to seven months to 24 months short-term or long-term sexual companion in the same time frame if you were dealing with the man who wanted to marry you especially at your age you're not two you're not 20 how complicated is it to decide whether or not you want to get married at 40 years old you already know what you're looking for 
at 35 years old. I mean, you think he's going to marry an older woman with a child? Are you out of your mind? Emma, go ahead. AMA, go ahead. Hello, was that you that kept coming on and off? No problem. <laughs> so, uh, what's your first name? How do you pronounce your first name? Ama. Ama. I'm gonna be there. So, do uh, women really have the options they think they have? Um. Probably not, but I think that that applies to um, like any race of women. I didn't say any race of women. I just said the women. But yeah. Um, but you're black. Yeah, I am. Okay, so I think it makes more sense to kind of stay where we are. Because what's the, why would you say it applies to any race of women? Because I think, well, just going based off of what you have been talking about, like most women aren't high value, so most women can't get a high value man. Not, how old are you? I'm 24. All right. Um, you, you're conf I don't want to conflate these things. Um, do women have the options they think they have? So you're saying that's a universal for all women. All right. Well, then if that's the if that's the case, what's going on with what women think? What's going on with women's thought process if they don't have the options that they think they do? I can take it either way. Why do women think they have options that they don't have? I think women do like overinflate themselves a little bit. Um but like I don't necessarily see that as a bad thing. Really? Really? No. Huh, I had an entire I've had this conversation the entire weekend. Tell me how a woman overinflating her sense of self and her actual value is helpful to them. Because confidence is attractive mm -hmm. and Yeah. No, you're wrong. I'll tell you why it's wrong. I'll tell you why it's bad. If you watch my show, there are women across my across my channel from 20s to 50s who are massively overinflating their value, all done in the notion of female empowerment, uplifting women, or confidence. But you know what it also does? Is it keeps women like that out on the market demanding more than they are worth. Meaning, if you have a car and it's worth $100,000, it would be foolish to sell it for 50. That's a bad deal. You're taking half the value. But if you have a car that's worth $20,000, it will be equally as foolish to ask for 60. And many women are in the opposite position. 20,000 asking for 60 and they're staying on the market waiting to get a higher price and what happens they go from 20 to 25 to 30 to 35 to 40 to 50 out here working making 70 cents 72 cents on every dollar that you know or whatever women don't earn more than men so women out here earning between 30 and 50 thousand dollars paycheck to paycheck you cannot save money towards retirement on that kind of income. You're living paycheck to paycheck to paycheck to paycheck to paycheck. Then what happens when a woman hits around 40, 45, 50, 60 years old when medical issues start to happen? Who's going to come save her? Who's going to help her? No husband, no children, and the state can't do it. Mm -hmm. That's how it's bad because you got women asking for more than they are worth and they're staying unattached no men, no children, no family, no support system. What city do you live in? I'm in Phoenix. Phoenix. 
Uh, go downtown Phoenix, and I bet you see a bunch of homeless men. You ever seen that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I do. I live in downtown. Okay. Well, now, could you imagine a world where you saw the same amount of homeless men and you saw the same amount of homeless women? No. That's what's coming. There ain't enough government. There ain't enough social safety net for them. So, yes, damn confidence. Because confidence blends into entitlement. And if a man walked around thinking that he was something he wasn't, the world knocks him back down and says, hey, man, you ain't all that. So I, I personally think it's one of the worst things that happen to women, overinflating your, your ego. Because women actually believe they're entitled to something that they're not. But I appreciate it, though. Thank you. Yeah, just one more thing to add. Sorry. Go ahead, because I have some more folks that I got to get in. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Um, I think it's even more so with Black women because um, there's like a Eurocentric beauty standard. And so to counter uh, that, I don't want to hear Black that. women. I don't, Eurocentric beauty standard. What does that mean? It's just like the closer that your features are to like being what about white, okay, what about like a, your, what about, no, I can't no I cannot do that because I'm sorry you go back that's a that's another one of these cop outs Eurocentric beauty standard what about a why is it so hard for women to understand that there is that beauty is required and what's one of the biggest thing that affects a woman's looks today. Is it her face or is it her body? Um, I would probably say the face. You're wrong. And it shows you don't know what men ask for. Name me a continent on the planet throughout a time in history where the women were out were weighed more than the men. Um, probably Africa. Mm -hmm. um no females don't typically weigh more than males not in mammal mm -hmm. anyway all right uh no no just no eurocentric beauty standard it's another way of saying don't give me a standard to have to deal with go back and look at your great your grandmother your great grandmother your great 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 grandmother and they weren't dress size 16 18 they were every bit of two, four, and six. My grandmother died and she was no bigger than a dress size eight. Hmm. Too many excuses we give our women. Oh, well, the Eurocentric beauty standard, what about what your man want? Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Hello? Get off my phone. You're a man. <laughs> I don't deal with men. I don't deal with men, especially men who call in and talk about why you dog out. Man, get out of here. There's nothing respectful about calling to my show, asking me. Go make your own show. Take up your daddy issues and your mommy issues somewhere else. Lola, go ahead. Lola. Hello. Yes, I can. No problem. How are you doing? I'm good. So do women have, do women really have the options they think they have? general uh well either way it works um, so are you are you black i am black all right well let's talk about black women that's where the that's what the, that's what the heat is do black yes. women really have the options they think they have um no and i'm just now finding this out by watching you know this manosphere um channels so i don't think so and i'm not sure why that is is it just because of the fitness component well um let's let's flesh it out how old are you 
I'm 26. 26. Uh, what have you consistently heard men say they want from women? Um, from where I come from, which is Ohio, I hear mostly that, that they want cooperation. Right. Um, and since we're talking about black women, are black women known to be cooperative with black men? <laughs> no, unfortunately. Okay. So right off the rip, you've answered your own question. Gotcha. Then going down the path, what do men typically say they want from women when it comes to, we're visual, what do men typically say they want from women? Yes, the fitness component. Right. And if 80, okay. if eight out of 10 black women are overweight and 80% of that number is obese, we're not, they're not getting cooperation. They're not getting fitness. And then you look at the culture and it prizes strong, independent. I don't need no man. Get the bag, secure the bag. Da, 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 da. Um, that's, that's what a lot of what's going on in our culture. So how can a woman that comes from that go to another group and say she has more options there when their, their culture uh, prizes cooperation, demands cooperation, doesn't want it, demands it, demands it at men who are making $20, $25 an hour. The average white man makes $50,000. He's not the average middle class white man. So it's not like he's making 50 and the average middle class black man is making 40. There's not $10,000 separation between an average middle class white man, average middle class black man, and what they get from women. So we got a misnomer thinking that white women are walking around uh, being cooperative only to millionaire white men. No, they're cooperating with guys who work third shift at the plant and are working and taking their 30 and his 50 and making 80 and building a life on that versus, so I mean, if our women say, well, if a man can't sit me in the house and I don't have to work, I don't need him. If I can't have a higher standard of living, I don't need him. At best, I need him for a kid. And now we got something else going on. You hear women say that being a mother is not as serious as being married. Being married yeah. is too much of a commitment. So um, while these men's spaces may be uh, a bit harsh to hear, they are saying what men truly want. And the question is, why aren't black women giving that to black men? And I understand that, but I just want to know, like, I don't understand how it's like the black community is the only community that has this problem of um, race. And as far as, you know, dating outside of our race, it's like if other communities do it, they just do it, but it's not such a big deal. But when it comes to our community, it's like a very big deal, I guess, because we're the minority. Well, as they would say. well what do you mean? So you mean when other groups date outside of their race, it's not a big deal? Yeah, like it's not like, you know. Um, Are you sure about that? Well, I think so. I'm not going to say I'm 100% I will, sure. I will tell you that I've been around plenty of Chinese people my entire life, and they, they don't want... They don't even want their children marrying certain, like Japanese and Korean. Uh, there's, 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 there's uh, prejudice that goes around the world. Most people want people to marry inside their own group. So yes, it's, it is. It's not just like only black folks have this issue. Uh, the the issue is black men and black women are not are not partnering in good faith. So when you already see one in four black women can ever expect to get married. And then you look at black men, you know, college educated black men who do marry, marry out in a term tune of one in three. So it's always been with black as a black man. I'm known if I ever decide to date, date out, I'm going to catch all kind of hell. But a black woman can date out and she's champion. I mean, Serena Williams had people throwing her uh, uh, parades. And Meghan Markle was a, you know, all of, all of a sudden became a celebratory black woman. But if a black man says something about it, then he's a sellout in the coon. 
Right. The question is, is black men want black women. Why are not, why are black women in mass not giving black men the cooperation and the fitness that they want? It's all they're asking for. Yes. I just think the single mother um, pandemic has really jaded a lot of the women to do anything that, that a man says to do. What do you just mean? Because, what do you mean the single mothers? What's just the, because it's uh uh-huh. what's the largest group of single mothers in at what age group are the largest group of single mothers? I would say probably Generation X, somewhere in there. Okay, but what's the largest what is but the largest group of first time mothers in black America are in their thirties now. Not mm-hmm. so yeah. My, Generation X did not have a lot of my mother generation uh, baby boomers had a lot of baby mamas. Generation X did not have an epidemic like that. We had a lot, but I grew up knowing you don't want to have no babies out of a lot. Um, why are the women not being cooperative with men? <laughs> oh, we- because the men haven't been around. I'm sorry to cut you off. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, and that's not. That's just from my personal perspective from where I come from. Well, I, I would I would tell you to get familiar with a website called blackdemographics.com because okay. because fifty one percent of black men are single and childless and sixty four percent are in the middle class. This is a popular talking point that's been prop that's been pushed by feminism and and uh, and honestly, a lot of this whole notion that black men walked out or good black men are either abusive, cheaters, marrying out, or somehow down low gay. And I'm and we're saying, no, that's not true. And that's why you're hearing so many black men in these spaces push back because the numbers show that a lot of the stuff being said about black men are not there. So my question is this, what about the black men who are 51% single and childless? And 64% in the middle class. That means men who are sitting out here working and as competitive as any other group of men. Why can't black women be cooperative and fit for them? Got you. But the answer is what? I'm not sure. Um, (laughs) (laughs) See, see, we got everything. We got all this other thing for single mothers and uh, history of white supremacy and racism. But what about the men who are 51% single and childless and 64% in middle class? They are here. They exist. We can document. We can document it. Verify it. CDC, Bureau of Labor Statistics, Department of Health. Blackdemographics.com, paper after paper after paper after paper, research after research after research. These black men exist. Why can black women not be cooperative and fit for them? And we say, don't know. Well, then what do you expect those black men to do? Die alone? Or do you expect them to go buy a dog? Or do what do you expect them to do? Yes, when you put it like that, I do get it now why they would go outside of their race or our race. But the question is, is like, where do you find these guys? I mean, I see the demographics, but that's not the reality for a lot of people in their hometown. Uh, what, uh, well, <laughs> what city are you in? Cincinnati. In Cincinnati. Uh, well. um, <laughs> I've already said, okay, well, how tall are you? I am 5'6". Dress size? I am a eight ten. Eight ten. Yeah. How much did you weigh last time you weighed yourself? One sixty. Okay. So again, you're even outside of the fitness thing. Yes, definitely. So even if you found the men, you're not giving them what they want. Even That's if I, true. Even if I said, "Hey, sis, there's, they're around the corner down the street. Here's the password. They'll let you in. You ain't giving them what they want." That is true. So why do you need to find them? Well, I mean, I'm working on it. So since I've been watching your show, I have gotten a nutritionist, nutritionist, excuse me, and a um, personal trainer. So I am working on it. See, and here's the thing. I will tell you, here's the funny thing. Uh, and let's just be honest, Lola. Funny that sisters like yourself can't seem to find them. But Becky Marisol Mylene 
don't see me having any problem locating them. Yeah, that's true. So when you see young black men going to the prom and there's 10 black men and all with white women, and when you see walking out of college with their young uh, Hispanic wife, I'm sorry. This is where black women are going to have to be competitive. See, we've removed a bunch of this. They don't exist. No, they exist. Because they cannot be marrying out and, and, and abandoning black women and not exist at the same time. But even you have to admit, yeah, even if I knew where they were, mm, you got to wait for me to get ready. At 26? You should already yeah. be ready, man. Yes, I definitely, I definitely understand it. But you know, it's just like the culture I get it. we were raised on that wasn't it. important. I get that it. wasn't you, okay. So yeah, yeah, I get. It. I mean, I, I, I make no mistake. The a lot of sisters were lied to, lied to, and, and and led astray. And I feel, and I feel really bad for Generation X black women who will come into this realization because you are young enough to where you can course correct. A lot of women, it's too late. And that's a hard pill to swallow, but whether I say it or not, it's the truth. So, you know, um, my goal is to, the extremes on either side, men or women, I don't try to talk to. It's just, what about the people who have an ear to listen? How can we help those people kind of understand what this, what, what she wants, what he wants, what he wants, what she wants, and, and put them in the same place to make a deal? I would say... I have a Facebook group that's been around going on about three months. I just decided to put it together. And now already, there are already four couples in there that have met and one's getting married. So, oh, really? Hey. Yeah. But see, but but what I did is I, 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 I went through and hand selected out of all the people who applied from YouTube and everywhere else. I just asked them some simple questions and I just said, well, guys need to be of a certain caliber. You need to be working. You need to be, uh, understand that men need to be able to be able to provide this that da, da, da. and women you need to understand that these kind of men want fit attractive cooperative women and while the men are in these groups doing what men do networking building the women just sit back and watch men vibe and if here's the thing i'm not a matchmaker and i don't get paid for it. the three four couples that match shit why there's money in keeping you single there's money in keeping you away from a black man. There's money in it. You're paying on an apartment rent. He's paying an apartment rent. You're paying utilities. He's paying utilities. There's money in this shit. That's why you, the, you got all these women, you know, women dating coaches, and, and you know, none of them ask, you know, Oprah, Yana Van Zandt, none of them. They don't ask men what they want. They just tell men what you should accept. And men are only going to accept what they want. So appreciate you calling in, sis. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. And shout out to the caller. You know, you know, I think it's I think more women are starting to come to these spaces and start trying to hear men out. Uh and realize that these guys do have a point and like it or not, they're the consumer. They get to decide. Hello. Uh oh. How are you? Uh and um I just wanted to apologize for the last time we spoke. I did come in bringing a really bad energy to your channel. But, but, but why? Um, I was coming from a heated debate with a friend of mine who was very like, woe is me. And I didn't know anything about your channel. And being newly divorced, there is a lot that I have to learn. Um, but I'm very, very open to any type of constructive criticism. So what I've been binging on your show and I'm just, I'm just the way, in ain't awe. It? <laughs> I'm in awe, like absolute awe of this show. Not, um, I just feel like everything you say as tough as it sounds to these women mm -hmm. and even me calling me a headache, I was an absolute headache because I'm there trying to defend myself instead of taking a moment to say, wait, 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 let's hear this man out. But I didn't know you. I didn't know your channel. I wasn't, I was coming into it as a recommendation and just getting my point across, but I hear my voice all the time. So I just need to sit back and, 
and kind of here you are. And I, I, I grew up with um, my dad raised me and he's a high value man. He's 74. And he I, I just remember listening to him, the way he carried himself, the way he dressed, just and just like yourself, very mm-hmm. polished, mm-hmm. tough love, very blunt. We, he didn't care if you didn't like what he, he said. That's just the truth. So, and then I went from that relationship with my father to a high value husband. And now as a single woman, I understand the topic at hand that you have here is no, we, we really think we are all that in a bag of chips and we're not the, the society is always telling us no. And men are always telling us no, because us putting ourselves forward as if with all the confidence that, you know, the media and propaganda and women lying to each other, telling us that we are, you know, we should be confident. You're beautiful. You're this, you're great. I feel like we need to hear more of the, I'm sorry for a lack of bad, better words. You ain't shit. Like get yourself together, <laughs> you know? Right. And in terms of looks, in terms of, I agree with everything, everything feminine. <laughs> it's like, I, I'm just like looking, I was the whole week I was busy and I was like but you know what you're saying what you're saying is is what happens to a lot of women Uh, I'm here in New York and uh you know I came I was in Philadelphia first and now came up to New York and uh a woman I've been I've been going out with here she was introduced to my show by a friend of hers who was like girl you gotta watch this fool right here and then next thing you know she's like no I like the show (laughs) <laughs> like, wait a minute, you're supposed to hate him and we're supposed to clown him. But funny thing is, we this entire weekend, we kind of sat together in this Love Jones kind of thing. And right. she's made a complete 180 because initially she was, if I could have had this recorded, this could have been a movie. And she was all like, the women on your show are broken and da da don't need this. Wow. And the women over here, I am I represent the strong, da 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 I'm, I'm not your target market. I'm like, no, you are my target market. But eventually... After it was me, her, a couple other people, it takes a little time to hear this because it's so different, but it's not right. coming from a place of, of anger. It's not coming right. from a place of hurt. It's coming from a place of, all right, we all we got. We all we got, and we can't afford to throw each other away so casually on things that other groups uh, would not would not uh, do that kind of stuff. So, yes, there is a there is a little realism that needs to come to a lot of women but in a in a way not to just smack you down but it's just all right bring it back down to reality so you can start to try to find men that can work with you at that level so you can move forward like i said my mother can get it together at 50 years old and she was whoo she was on a feminism post and she's been married the last 23 years and it's happy and i'm like you know more of this needs to happen. So I, I got it that where you were coming from. There's a show point component. There's an entertainment component, but just kind of hang in there. And, uh, you know, it's definitely, it's definitely, it's shifted the way that I think, mm-hmm. um, in a way where I felt, well, I wasn't, I was new to the dating scene, but I wasn't actively dating. I've been talking to one person, sticking to one person. But um, in the sense, like, I appreciate everything that you stand for because what has, what has everything that we've been doing, what has that gotten us? So it's kind of like, what do you have to lose other than hear this man out? And it also gave me the insight to listen to other men and realize that, you know, I am a 32 year old divorcee with two kids. And that is in and of itself, something that, you know, a single woman who doesn't have that, those children or who's just as attractive as me or more would she would, you know, they would go for her. So it's kind of like, you know, yeah, be confident in who you are, but also understand that you have baggage and, you know, what, what does that person want as well? Do you know what I mean? And compromising. So, you know, the celibate thing, okay, that's a moral issue, but like at the same time, like, I do believe, I understand where you're coming from. It's like, what are you willing to offer here? Right, right, so. right. And guys, I know my screen is frozen, but you know, and here's the thing, as long as people are willing to have the conversation and say, all right, well, 
where am I willing to meet somebody? Where am I willing to try to meet somebody and, and what they want? And um, from that point, you know, everything's possible. Everything is possible. So appreciate would you. I be, what would I go in terms of like what uh, I apologize. I, I can let you go. Just, go ahead, just go one last time. Yeah. What, where would I stand in the high value woman? Would I be considered a high value woman in according to your, um, you know, your profession or how you kind of. Well, see this high value, high value is different for women. Um, right. 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 Yeah. The, the, the situation for women is different in the sense that um, coming from marriage makes a massive, massive change. Um, and what really most women who are coming from your position, uh, what it really comes down to is, can you work with a man that was kind of like, uh, are, you were married for how long? 11 years. See, you already have the ability to work with a man. Can you get on another man's program? And see, that's the thing. Mm. Um, that's going to be the challenge because you are used to a, a man moving in a certain way. I mean, you're a comp I don't like how. Okay. Are you competitive? And, you know, from what I can see, um, I don't I don't have your picture. Um, but how tall are you? How much do you weigh I'm in your dress size? And the picture you have on the screen, is that a recent picture? Yeah, that's about four or five months. I can okay. come on the video. I'm I'm five nine, okay. three quarters. Okay. So five ten ish. Yeah. Well, I mean, and your children are how old? Seven and ten. See, um, that makes you a definitely a competitive woman. So it is far easier for competitive women to actually get out here and make a deal. I will tell you that um uh everybody has these parameters. Let me go ahead and put my this default screen up here. Has these Everybody has these parameters up here, but they're always open to interpretation when the right person comes along. So right. um you're in Chicago? No, I'm I'm based in Atlanta, but right now I'm just in Canada. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um well, I will say this, you you have you have the look uh, it's really can it comes down to um, what's your situation like with your your ex? Are you guys co-parenting effectively? What's his yeah. going to be like yeah. when you start dating? Because that's going to be the biggest determining factor of how effective you can be out here. And friends and here's the thing. Yeah, um, it's far easier for a woman who has eleven years of dealing with a man to be competitive out here as long as you keep yourself looking good uh in in shape and then realizing that yeah. you know you'll attract a certain caliber of man based upon your aesthetics and deals can be made uh i don't like to go too much into right my i dress hold on Sorry. Sorry. I, I don't like to go too much into my personal life but i've mentioned that uh the the people i deal with preferably uh but that's that's always open to interpretation stay on the program i got some more people coming in and I'm trying not to get the show over midnight, but I appreciate you calling in and I'm um, glad you. I appreciate you, Kev. Keep Thank doing you. the good work. Thank I'm you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. So, you know, I don't like to tell too much about my personal life. Um, but you guys know I typically prefer to date women under 30. And I've said that if I'm going to ever really get serious with somebody, it's between this and this. But you you can't know. <laughs> That's not a hard, fast thing. What works for you? You need to know what works for you. More importantly, at this age, what do you need versus what you want? Hey, Letitia, how are you? Hey, Kevin, how are you? Good. Uh, Jesus, I was trying to get my, my camera back on at the same time. What do you got for us? So I was just calling in um, because I just, I'm looking in a chat and, and just hearing the young ladies and it's just breaking my heart because I just want them to know that, you know, as a matchmaker, um, a good majority of my clients are white and they're Henry's and up. Mm -hmm. And they're, one of their biggest requirements is fitness. 
we like to use the word fit in matchmaking. Um, and what that entails is someone who is slender, someone who works out, someone who has a pleasing aesthetic. Mm -hmm. um, they're very stringent with that requirement. So thinking that you're going to be able to find a um, quality man, a high earner, a man who is going to be able to provide resources so you can have a comfortable lifestyle, they come with standards. Yeah. They very, they come with standards. They come with requirements, and they're not going to deviate it, de deviate from them. I was. Let me let me say. Let me, hold on, Latish. Let me address something. Uh, Michael, understand something. I'm a public person. The people in my life are not public people. You fool. So if I don't want to go into aspects of my personal life, it's because they are not public. You guys get this thing twisted like somebody's trying to hide something. Do you know what's going on with your favorite singer, your favorite actor? You don't know about their personal life. You know about their work product. So you Negroes need to stop trying to think you need to know everything about somebody to know whether or not they're credible. If you don't like it, get the fuck off my show. But you'll never know anything about my personal life unless I choose to put it up here. Every day I run into somebody who recognizes me. Every day when I'm out, someone says, are you so-and-so? I'm I'm built for that. I chose to do this. The people I deal with in my life did not. And if you haven't noticed that the amount of critique, criticism, outright trolling that a public person can get, I would like to see what you would do with your personal friends, your family members, your loved ones, if you want to subject them to that. So don't think somebody's trying to hide something because I have a private life. Kiss my ass. Go ahead. So I just wanted to say, um, I was in a group with a bunch of young ladies and the subject of marriage came up. And I just think that a lot of black women, they just don't care. And they've just gotten to the point where they don't care and they don't, they really truly believe that they don't have to do anything. I literally was told that they didn't have, they felt they did not have to do anything to attract a black man. And I'm sitting here. I'm saying as a matchmaker, I deal with men and I deal with the type of men that you ideally want to be with. And I'm trying to tell you what they want and you're telling me, you're calling me a pick me and telling me I'm lying. And unfortunately I was booted out of that group. But I just want the young ladies to know that Kevin is not lying. He's not just because he's a man and he's sitting here. He's not trying to brainwash anyone. He's not trying to get over anyone. This is the truth. Men <laughs> Letitia, you know what? I, when I hear, when I hear, I'm sorry to cut you off, but when I hear that, what I hear is women who don't think the music will stop. It's like musical chairs. And a lot of these women have really think because they can deal with a man, you know what that means. Yes. <laughs> but they don't really think it will stop and they don't think that after they hit a certain age that the amount of attention drops through the floor and and what I challenge them to do is come to a program like this and look at all the women over a certain age like over 40 who say I wish I would have done something in my youth nobody's trying to like you said not trying to get over I'm trying to get you not to end up dying alone because this is happening worldwide and unlike other groups where the system may be more willing to help, I don't foresee the system being extremely generous to a bunch of folks that look like you and me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get through the, go ahead and let, the last few things. I got some more, two more calls and I'm going to get out. I just wanted to say that um, I was talking to a young lady and she was saying how her um, generation, generation, I'm generation X, the millennial generation how they ha are so desensitized to their bodies and how it's just another means of making money for them and how they no longer value men. They don't see men as a benefit. Yes. Um, so that is a problem that we're facing that these women, you're having children out of wedlock and you're raising them by yourselves and not realizing the damage that is being done to their mental state in their psyche and how they are not seeing men as valuable and needed. Well, you know, and this is where I, I talk about men have a, the men's move in my opinion is gone from CIA to II, increase and improve. 
And as men continue to increase and improve for our own well-being, it, it, it inevitably increases your overall value. And that's going to have a, 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 multi, a multiplying effect. They'll, these men will have more options and opportunities. And then inevitably, for the women who have the, an eye towards the future, they can actually start to see men as valuable because right now we have the hookup culture and all these kind of things that you or I can't deal with. But I'm not going to tell a man to increase his value to turn around for a woman who does not value him at all. So, like I said, the extremes, neither one of us can deal with. It's just the people who are willing to sit down and listen. And even those are some of the most ardent critics. And those are the people I like to talk to because I find in a way that we can agree on at least a couple of things. So, appreciate it, sis. Thanks for calling in. Have a great night and you keep up the fight because I appreciate you so much. Oh, I will appreciate it. All right, then. That's my friend there. Um, look, ladies, um, Amber Lynn. Uh, uh-oh. Um, Jenny XU. So, yeah, you know, I, I, I do get the, you know, modern the modern groups are just kind of going out in couples and, um, I think it just. I think the more these things happen, and the more conversations that happen, especially as we're going into this next round of cold and flu season and coronavirus. You know, we had it at the end last year. We got quarantined and locked down at the end. We're going into a full season of this, and it's easy to say somebody ain't valuable uh, while you can move out and about. I don't believe it. I believe that many more women are starting to realize that I need a man for more than just the bedroom. You know, I saw it in Atlanta around the look in a lot of women's eyes when they had to leave their shelter to go out for supplies. They recognized that they were vulnerable. You know, and, you know, I I can't do anything about the culture, the music. All I can do is... I'm doing what I, we're doing what we can. So thank you for everybody that comes to the show. I thank you for for all the critics, the pushback, the pushback makes it better. I'm not looking for everybody to agree with me by, by all means, you know, I read the comments. I read, you know, some of the things, as long as it's given in, you know, construct, as long as it's not pejorative. Hello. How are you? First name? You've called in before. Okay, what do you got for me? So a lot of the things that you actually talk about are kind of newer concepts um, and have challenged kind of my ideals about realistically what I bring to the table and what I'm looking for and what I want for my future. Um, I guess I wanted to just kind of pick your brain on, so are you saying if you kind of know what you want and if you're currently dating somebody who doesn't kind of match to what you kind of think the future that or the picture or ideal that you want? Are you saying it can never get there or are you- Well, let me stop. First off, how old are you? I'm 25. 25. Uh, Tell me what you need. I don't care about what you want. Hmm. And right there. See, right there at 25, we're more concerned with the pictures about what we want. Want, want, want. You said want seven times. Right. I didn't hear you say need once. And what it tells me is you have not asked yourself what you need. What do you need from a man? Hmm. And, if the, I, and if the person, well, and once yeah. you figure out what you need, okay. if that person, if you pick the person that's based upon wants, then it'll be very, it will be highly unlikely that that person will be the same. And that's okay. I see. But continuing to have, you don't have to, but here's the thing I hate to see men and women do. In situations to where one, you're with somebody you like, you like the way they look, you like their sex, but they're not what you need. You're wasting time. Okay. So while these may be newer concepts, these are old concepts. They're just new to you. Two things. What do you need from a man? And then what kind, do you want a man that you have to contend with? Meaning, do you want a man that can actually teach you something, lead, uh, teach your children something, be an impact to the family, the community, and the group? 
Do you want any of those things? Yeah. Well, then you pick that first. Forget okay. what you want. You pick you pick productivity and character. I see. You okay. pick looks and dick size later on. I don't care about all that. I honestly really don't. Sure. If y'all really understood what I thought about a lot of the things that modern women ask, you shit. Because it all comes down the line. What do you need? Because you're going to have to ask yourself a question. You're going to be the last call. Okay. Marriage is a big deal. You're talking about somebody who has power to turn off the uh, life-saving equipment. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal. In case of emergency. We're talking about, we assume that everything's going to go well. But what happens if you're involved in an accident and you're paralyzed from the neck down? You, want, you need somebody that's going to sit there and change your diaper. Mm -hmm. It's a serious thing. So okay. I would really say, what kind of lifestyle would I like to have? That's fine. But what do I need? And then go from needs. Okay? Okay. Got yeah. it. Thank you. Thank you very much, sis. Bye-bye. Bye. Shout out to the callers. Shout out to everybody tonight. You know, I knew this was going to be a difficult conversation. And um, the, the uh, systems were trying to slap a slap stuff around on the brother um but we got through it <laughs> <From home. laughs> what's going on so we got we got the sounds back going on Whatever, i'll do what i want we got the sounds going back on shout out to my friend hold on hold on, hold on. Here, here he goes i'm a phd oh man oh man look all right understand guys when i give you know I try to give information that's not me because it's not my uh, specific wants. Um, there's always going to be one truism between every man and every woman. There's going to come a one-to-one -one negotiation, a one-to-one -one agreement. And oftentimes when you meet that person that does it for you, it, it tends to, um, uh, you know, people tend to be amazed, like, well, I thought you wanted this or wanted that. Well, you may find the best of both worlds. What do you need? There are people out there who may be what you need, and I will tell you, you need to learn to make what you need what you want. I will say this. Uh, in divorce care, I talked to so many successful, high-achieving, high-earning men who went through horrendous situations. And across the board, we were all like this. The next time I deal with somebody, whenever that is, all I need is she just needs to be nice. I mean, and that's really what it comes down to. These aesthetics and all these things, yes, very important, especially for men. We're visual. But ladies, what do you need? And what does he need from you? Men need a woman to be inspiring. And that inspiration can come in a multitude of different ways. But what we don't need is men being raised to think because they have standards, because they have desires that they are somehow, uh, that what they want is invalid. Ladies, guys just want cooperation, uh, fitness. And that's not, doesn't seem like a lot to ask. But um, I think one of the bigger questions is going to be outside this show is, why do so many, why does it seem like a large or a growing amount of women just think, seem to think men don't deserve to ask for nothing? That's why I'm getting from Letitia and a lot of the matchmakers. What I hear over and over is a lot of women are like, Psh, you don't have the right to ask for nothing. You get me and you should be happy you have me. That won't work. That won't work because even the most right-minded man will say, I'll go elsewhere. I mean, you know, guys have a long, guys a long time ago. Guys are good with buying dogs. Shit. Um, then there's hope. There's hope. Here's the thing, ladies. Refer this. Refer these platforms out. Refer this out because it's not uncommon. I'm running to somebody's like, oh, I hated you, and now I binge watch you. That means there's something out there, um, and the conversation needs to continue. It needs to go on. I'm glad the phone calls are still a mixture of funny, engaging, but it seems like every night we get a little something. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. So shout out to the CIA, the, con 
the confident, intelligent, and assertive men out there. One love to the FBI, feminine, beautiful, and inspirational ladies out there. Yes, 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 we're going to have a good time. Tomorrow night, we're going to get into it. Should competitive people, should the competitive or the high value, if they can't find what they want, if it's not readily available, I mean, these people are busy. Should they marry out? Oh, snap. That one is going to be a barn burner. We've got to keep it respectful. Keep it nice. Keep it cool. Remember the comment section. You can say what you want. The rock out. No pejoratives. No insults to me or any of the callers. You can say what your opinion, but keep it, keep it cool, man. Please, I'm not going to allow you to call people names and all that kind of stuff. If YouTube don't take it, I'll take it. Remember, at the end of the day, this is a portion of male media, black male media. And the comment sections represents the whole. Many times people will try to say, well, the host may be this, but look at the comment section. We don't allow that. Keep it cool. Keep it classy. Until the next time, talk to you later. We are gone. I'm a PhD. Cause I'm addicted to the good life. Yes. Yeah. Lead the way. I'm a PhD. No need to say. We'll be a Whatever. I'll do what I want. <laughs> Join me on Patreon for videos you will only see there, guys. Shout out to all the patrons for making this thing possible. Patreon and Kevin Samuels, Kevin R. Samuels. Thank you very much. Follow me on Instagram, Kevin R. Samuels, for impromptu things in a frat room when I'm moving around the city. I'll be here till Sunday. Out and about. It was dreary today. We're going to have a great rest of the week. Follow me on Instagram for things you will only see there. Email your show ideas to info at bykevinsamuels.com or go to bykevinsamuels.com, go to scheduling, pick your virtual console or your billable hour. Spend your time with me. Respect my inbox. Cause I know what I'm getting into. Yes. Yeah. And nothing can stop me. No. Cause I'm addicted to what you and I realize. If you're a DJ or a sound guy and you want to remix any of the clips of the things that I have, I'm all for it. You heard Ike's song today. I love that kind of stuff. Um, I'll actually announce the person who did that and I'll put it down in the description. I want to give everybody their credit. You know, play it forward. Remember, ladies, as pretty as possible. Remember, gentlemen, increase and improve. And at the end of the day, life comes down to the choice. The kind of choice you make determines the kind of life you will have. You, it's up to me. You cannot choose what happens to us, only how we respond. You get to choose how you respond.